right? Hi everyone, this is day five of the advent calendar in Erlang, uh, where I can't spend forever doing the wrong thing because I don't understand the problem. Uh, which is what I've done on day four. Uh, specifically before we get started, uh, I've come up with a small optimization just yesterday after rereading the code once the video was over. And uh, one of the things that was happening with both of the valid functions was that no matter how many times or no, no matter what the number we are analyzing is, uh, we would look at all the digits to figure out if it was valid or not. However, the moment that the digit is no longer increasing, it's no longer valid. And so if we just add this one small clause here, that detects that the increasing value that we have here is no longer true, it aborts and stop going. So if the first two digits of a six digit number uh, are out of bounds or are not increasing or respecting the rules properly, it's no use checking for the duplicates in all the other places. And so uh, when we run it, it now takes something like 100 milliseconds to run both of them, whereas it used to be around 300 milliseconds. Uh, another small interesting thing that happened is that I was working with a friend and we came up with a regular expression that solves a problem. And so this regular expression is done in awk. You can make a more compact one in Perl. Um, but this one is interesting because the only thing you need is a sequence of all digits. This was the input uh, I was required to provide. If we look at the result here, that was 1133. And that was the output that I required for this one. Um, and the way this regular expression works is that this looks essentially that I have two digits either at the beginning or at the end of the string or that otherwise they are surrounded by non-zero strings. And this pattern is repeated for all digits from zero to nine. And then it looks that um, this is for the ever increasing. So it looks that the following is not true, that I get a digit from one to nine, then followed by a zero, which means it goes down. And then I just did all the ranges for these, uh, for all the possible pairs that would show us that the value is not increasing. And what's interesting is that when we run it, uh, we get the right result here for the second part. And it takes us about 300 milliseconds to do. So roughly the same amount of time as the um, slightly but not completely optimized Erlang code that I had yesterday. All right, so on this, let's look at the five. So the day five issue is, huh, starting to sweat as the ship makes its way toward Mercury. The L suggests that you get the air conditioner working by upgrading your ship computer to support a thermal environment supervision terminal. Okay. Uh, the thermal environment supervision terminal test starts by running a diagnostic program, your puzzle input. All right, so let's get the puzzle input. All right. oh, okay, that's just underline, it's not a link. Uh, we'll run on your existing encode computer. Okay, after a few modifications. So we'll take the old ones from, uh, that was day two, I think. First, you'll need to add two new instructions. So the thing I'm going to do with that computer, though, is um, I'm going to go in here in uh, day 02, and I'm going to just copy paste the elements uh oh, that was not that one so it was probably oh yeah that was the one and the thing i'm going to do is i'm going to copy paste or rewrite parts of it because i want the old problems to still be runnable and if i just kind of extract them to a library change the structure for new program of new programs i'm not going to be able to keep everything working uh so we'll come back to that one and maybe i'll restructure it a few times already uh there upcode three takes a single integer as an input and saves it uh -huh. So here now it takes a single integer, and that's one of the things that we had um, on day two is that I made a thing where the number of instructions to apply a thing and skip is not related to the upcode, right? That one does not tell you how many arguments it needs and whatnot, so uh, I'm going to do that as a first change so that the upcode thing also knows how many arguments it needs. and eventually how many pointers it must skip ahead for these. Um, all right, uh, okay. Take a single integer, but save the position, saves it to the position given by its only parameter. Okay, for example, position 350 would take an input value and store in the address 50. 
of code 4 outputs the value of its only parameter. Uh -huh. The instruction 450 would output the value at address 50. These programs use these instructions will come with documentation that explain what should be connected to the input and output. Okay. Yeah, okay, so 3, 0 would be output. Yeah, stores it at value 0. 4 outputs would set 0 and outputs to value 3. Oh, and that's not support for parameter modes. Each parameter of an instruction is handled based on its parameter mode. Right now, your ship computer already understands parameter mode zero. Position mode. Oh, god damn it. Okay. So it's going to be a double state machine. That's going to be interesting. Which causes the parameter to be interpreted as a position. If the parameter is 50, the value is the story address 50 in memory. Until now, all the parameters have been in position mode. We we'll also need to handle parameters in mode one, immediate mode. In immediate mode, a parameter is interpreted as a value. Okay, if the parameter is 50, its value is simply 50. Parameter modes are stored in the same value instructions upcode. In the same v as the instructions upcode. What? Or okay, the upcode is a two-digit number based. Oh, okay. Based only on, uh, I say A, okay, but I'm clearly not understanding what's going on in here. Uh, hopefully the example will clarify it. Otherwise, that's going to be a fun day with a lot of detours again. All right, that is, the upcode is the rightmost two digits of the first value in an instruction. Parameter modes are single digit. Okay, one per parameter read. The first parameter is mo I hate these instructions. They are kind of garbage. Uh, the first parameter's mode is in the hundreds. Dig Why? Okay, wait. I had a two digits based only on the ones and tens digits of a value. Okay. The upcode is the rightmost digit of the first value in instructions. Parameter mode are single digits. Upcode is a two digit number. One per parameter. Read from right to left from the upcode. The first parameter's mode. Okay. We'll see what it is, but I think I finally get it. Same parameters in the thousands digits, ten thousands digit. And so, for example, okay, yeah, that's what I was probably getting at. So, first instruction is a multiply instruction. That's the upcode one. The rightmost two digit from the value of code. Uh, oh no no no. Okay yeah. Our value two indicating up code two multiplication and going right to left. The parameter modes are zero, a hundred digit, and one the thousand digits. Uh. Oh, screw you. Not present and therefore zero. Okay, because the two rightmost ones are going to be the upcode. Then the first, then the first. Oh yeah, and there is a fifth. There is a fourth argument, third, a third argument that should be another digit. That's going to be where you save the freaking thing. Oh man, this really sucks. Okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Two digits. Uh, what? DE, okay, that's the index that I just went on. Instruction multiplies its first two parameters. The first parameter, 4, is in position mode. Yeah, that's the default value. The first parameter, 4, in position mode works like it did before. Its value is the value stored at address 4. The second parameter, 3, is in immediate mode. Where am I now? Which instruction is that? This, okay, that's still the same one here. It's first two parameters. First parameter four, no, where, where's the, oh yeah, here. Four is up there, the one I'm liking here. It's in position mode because we are in zero. In position mode means a pointer. Okay. So to make that work the easy, okay. 
parameter is that an instruction writes to will never be in immediate mode. Yeah, that makes sense because you cannot write to a value. You need a pointer to go through. Okay, finally some notes because this is not enough. It is important to remember the instruction pointer should increase by the number of values in the instruction after the instruction finishes. Because, yeah, this amount is no longer always 4, we got that. Integer, integers can be negative. It's a valid program, blah, blah, blah. That's all right. If the test diagnostic program will start by requesting from the user, well, okay, from the user the ID of the system to test by running an input instruction, provided on the ID of the ship's air conditioner unit. Okay, but I have opcodes for inputs, outputs, but not the bad. Uh, various parts of the encode computer run on the model function correctly for each test that will return an output instruction indicating how far the result of the test was from the expected value, where zero means the test was successful, non zero positive. Finally, the program will output a diagnostic code and immediately halt. This final output isn't an error. If all the outputs were zero except the diagnostic code, the diagnostic program ran successfully. After providing one to the only input instruction and passing it to the test, did we have an input instruction in what was mentioned? Oh yeah, okay, at least we have that. That's going to be fine. The instruction... But that requires us to make um, an interactive program, and that kind of sucks. Uh, the thing I'm going to try to do is just pass it a buffer, and we can change it later, but that will let us line, kind of line up all the instructions we want. So really, this one is going to be kind of, um, I'm going to grab the program input. It's going to be kind of crappy to do, so I'm going to just re-implement a lot of it because what I had was clearly not good enough. Uh, day 05. All right. Now back to the page because we are going to read and reread the hell out of that thing. So. Why? Am I using this in terms of these? Input to map. Oh yeah, input to map was actually running the program. This is going away. Right now, input to map was just... Yeah. We're just going to start mostly from scratch on this anyway. All right. So I'm going to move this into smaller parts that are going to make it easier to get an example. Uh, and I'm going to use the input as an explicit parameter here. That's going to be day five. And then I only need the integers. I'm going to call it to source code and that's going to be my source code. Okay, so now all we have is a crap load of integers. And the way the kind of parsing they do works with that one here. It's going to be really, really pain painful if we take the integers and keep them as integers and it would force us to keep all the values into, you know, strings until we turn them into whatever might be an instruction or an address or something. And because we go off boundaries here, um, I'm thinking that we should be able to uh, reuse what we did yesterday in day four with regards to 
these next digit. We're just going to get rid of the uh, we're just going to get rid of the boundary condition and check. And I'm going to write a small test for that one to make it work better. Oops. Uh, And the thing I want to do for that one is we have a default value. So I'm going to return out of a few of these. I don't need the next one. The thing I'm going to do instead is going to be the position. And the position is going to be from, OK. Let's design this a bit. I'm going to turn that one off. and. It's always a two digit upcode. So I'm going to name them differently. Okay, I'm going to make a bunch of a uh, function. I'm going to read the upcode of, of an integer. And the upcode is always going to be the two rightmost digits. And so if I get to my shell here and I have, what's the input they gave me? That was a thousand two. I'm going to put a zero in there to make it explicit. And I want essentially to have zero two as a result. I should be. Is that the integer the division? No, no. It should be the remainder of dividing it by 10. And so if I had this yep, by 100, actually. All right. The remainder of by 100. That gives me my upcode. Then uh, my default value is 0, right? Position mode 1, 0. Position mode one zero omitted due to being a leading zero, and this is what is interesting. Leading zero is going to work really, really well with what we're doing because as long as we're going out of bounds, we're always going to get a zero remainder in our divisions and the things we do. So um, then it's going to be a parameter, and I want to have say the first one. So that's going to be the nth parameter to a function. And so going back here, I'm going to mostly want to have its position or something like that. Oh, actually, this should be a map. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it that way. Uh, it's going to be, uh, I'm just going to call it extract up code. Because those are not the interpreted value, right? This is still the raw value for the outcode and for the param for, for the parameters and all that stuff. And this is not necessarily what I need because I will want to have something higher level in the end that is going to call these two functions and going to give me something like this, and then you know address, and then a value m, and then this should be a return address always something like that. And this will be my whole instruction and then it will be a lot easier to go read and fetch all of them. And that's going to be my base abstraction and my higher level program is going to operate on these kinds of values. And so I will actually, it should even be nicer. It should be done this way. So all my instructions are going to be a two tuple. So whenever I get the option to do something like input and only a single address like that, then I will know, or oh, actually it should be a list, right? A list is going to be uh, a lot. No, it's going to be a tuple because they're all going to be by addressing. And so doing something like that will let me have positional, yeah, I'm going to use a list. It's going to be nicer, at least easier to do for all kinds of matching. Uh, something like that. And so all my instructions will essentially be upcode and params at a high level. So right now what I'm getting here is just going to be the raw upcode value. Uh, I could do a match upcode right away, but we'll see how that goes. Let's start. I do this too often of just skipping around with Oh yeah, I could do it this way and that way and that way. And then I skip around and I lose everything. So 
this gives me the two basic digits. This is always going to be a basic number I want. If I want the first parameter, I need to add one zero. So that would be, you know, times 10 will give me, uh, yeah, that's the first one. Oh yeah. And then I need to start doing my division by And that gives me zero and that would be the first one then if i want the one after that which should give me a one yep and the one after that that gives me a zero and that's what i need to properly do and so my position that i want is going to be i should actually start yeah so if I want something in the first position, I need to do 100 times 10, which is just going to be 1,000. And the other parameter is going to be, in what I said, 100 for 2. It would be 10 thousands and then 1,000. And so it follows that zero would be somewhere in there, but I'm not going to fall to allow a zero. So my, my base RAM is always going to be something like that. My base div is going to be this. And the rest is essentially how many zeros I add to that. Yep. Is that right? No, that's no. Oh, wait. That's. Right, 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 right. Zero. It's the same number, I think. No, it's not. It is not. Because, yeah, if I divide by itself and nothing, it needs to be 10 fewer. 100 times less. Yeah, that one is too small. So those are my base, 110. That is correct. And the thing I want to do, and that's the thing I figured out yesterday, I think, after a lot of time. Nope, I just did it. Yeah, times 10 for each iteration. So, the easiest way to do that one is going to be time. Multiplier is going to be uh, what's in this is not just yeah. Is there even a square function? No, there's only a square root function. That's the weird thing. I didn't recall if there was one of them. So the multiplier, you know, well. Uh, power, oh, yeah, that's probably that. That should be a power of 10 to the power of 1, to the power of 2, to the power of 3, and that's exactly what I'm going to want. Uh, but it's a floating point number, so I'll just need to truncate it. And I'm going to assume that I don't need something like, you know, if I need too many of them, it's going to explode because the power is too high, but I don't expect to have 350 parameters. I should be good to go up to... Oh, I'm losing precision. Okay, I'm going to make my own math function for a power of 10 up to the nth. Time or a multiplier, and then it's just going to be again up uh, and two. Uh, oh, too many things. God. All right. Oh, okay, it's reminder and then divide. And 
just because I'm never entirely sure of the operation order. Okay, and we're going to make it like extremely simple to the power zero. It's just going to return. So, um, we're going to write a few tests. We're 25 minutes in. God damn it. Uh, this is similar to what I did yesterday. The difference on that one is that I'm going to uh, only export my, you know, extract upcode function and extract param functions uh, if I'm in a test module. And so, uh, test the 05 suite. I'm going to copy paste a bunch of things. It's going to be a little simpler. All right. And I'm going to start just the. Uh, I'm going to have the upcode and well, let's call it the. Uh, just a parse test. I'm going to skip on the documentation today and I'm going to use the number that they gave us in the example and just figure out what to do with it. Uh, because I have a f desire to go much faster in what I do but I know very well from all my mistakes that if I do that, I usually mess it up in fun ways. Oops, here we go. All right. So this is what we have here. I'm going to just comment that thing out. I have to be more careful with my things. So uh, given the digit is going to be 02, so uh, day 05. And my function was called extract upcode of the two. I want it to give me the value two for the upcode. Uh, the value zero for extract the first parameters. Oops, value one for the second parameter and value, well, no, that should be the value zero here. And then, because it's a leading zero. And then, okay, that should be all we need. It still complains here. That one has stopped complaining. Uh, I'm going to only test this one sweet. Syntax error, nice. Wait, what is this on that one? No, it's on day five. What did I mess up? P1 and P0 are undefined, syntax error line 13. Ooh, yep, 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 yep. And this is M. Bonus points to the people who have spotted it and had to stay silent while I was figuring that one out. Goddamn, okay. So on the first parameter, expected zero, and I got one. Oh. Oh. There we go. That's a off by one error because I was getting the digit after the one I'm requiring, and that means my index was not good. Here we go. Okay, so that part works. Hopefully we understand it well. So now it's going to part uh, just just opcode. Just give me the freaking opcode. And so I'm going to extract the opcode. And Uh, 
for this value. Now, based on the upcode, I will want to get all my instructions based on it. So let's call it to. Uh, yeah, that's actually, oops, that's actually a better name for it. Instruction. Yeah, and the list here is going to be actually very, very useful. And I'm going to show you why, because I just had the little flash about what I want in there. So here, what I'm going to have to, uh, this is going to be an upcode digit. Here I want to have to upcode and uh, the numbers of parameters, so parent count, is going to be equal to my upcode digit. And now when I'm there, I'm going to be able to, you know, extract uh, uh, parents types here is just going to be an param count. And so what I'm going to return from this function explicitly, I'm going to put a space there, it's going to be upcode and, you know, um, address, value, address, something like that. And then I'm going to be able to send that to uh, the rest of the parsing. Once I know the number of arguments, I'm going to be able to do something a bit fancier. But now at least I'm specifying all the types and this can be mapped to the other values. And so once I have the param type, essentially it's going to be up and the param types, and that's my return value for this function. So upcode, and here's a fun one. So we had, uh, what are all the freaking upcodes we've been specified? Oh God, I need to go look at the old ones. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see what we, oops, upcode, exit was 99, and 99 was actually taking zero arguments. Um, then I had the upcode, did it start at zero, did it start at one, I have terrible short memory. One, two, okay, and that's an addition, which means a plus and takes three arguments. The other one was number two, that was multiplication, took three arguments. Now we need to go into um, this one here. Oops, God. Upcode 3 is input and takes a single argument, which is going to be the address, but we don't care for that now. Jeez. Uh, Let's be clear. Takes a single argument, that's the return value. And then we had uh, upcode 4 is output and takes a single parameter, so. That one is always going to be last, so let's use it that way. All the other ones are going to crash anyway. Uh, did I have any upcodes? No, two new instructions. All right. So we got the two new instructions, and we've got the digit. So now what we need to go to do is go from this mode to this mode. Uh, now we're going to need uh, the sequence of the program to start parsing that. So, oh yeah, that was a map, right? The program was a map. We had a pointer. Let's go see what we had here. Yeah, that's why we had a map because we need to jump randomly to various values based on the va uh, on the position of the pointer that we're at right now. And they don't call it the pointer, right? They call it the what do they call it? The position? 
Yeah, okay, it's a position. I'm just going to... Yeah, it's a position. So it's going to be... Uh, No, that's not that. Uh, I can parse the entire program using it, if I recall. So it's going to be. Oh, that's source, right? So it's going to be source to instructions, essentially. I'm going to start at a given position. I have a map. And I'm just going to go forwards all the time on this. So I'm going to get from this one at a given position. It's going to be called a digit. All right, it's the uh, it's the opcode, the low level opcode. So n is what I'm getting from the map. Then I will be able to get the instruction out of n. So let's make. Skip end altogether, and that's going to give me the upcode and the arc types. And then I will be able to get uh, for all the arc types all of the arguments using the current pointer. So up get args from p plus one and the map and this is what I will return and I could also return you know the pointer plus uh, length of the arc types plus one because that's going to be like how many so plus will give you a plus four here of the skip to be given so the result is going to be this this and uh, the next pointer actually no I don't like this that can be calculated afterwards like I could do an instruction size thing and that's going to be able like you know upcode args and it's just going to be one plus length of args that's what I need to do and then I can keep my instructions the way I had planned to keep them uh, this one is not needed yet but it's going to be nice so that's going to be my instruction. I'm going to parse all of that. Instruction is going then to be P plus instruction size of instruction and the map itself because at this point we have modified modified nothing at all okay uh, I'm curious if this will break some of my addressing but I'm guessing not well, what's going to be interesting is I'm sure that at some point in the future this address is going to point to an operation and that is going to break a few things uh, because we will need to shift from this eager evaluation to some form of uh, lazy evaluation. But for now, we're going to try this one and see if it works. Uh, I need to implement the uh, the get argument. So this is going to be. Uh, I'm going to finish on. Oh, there is a possibility of getting va zero arguments. So I'm going to return an empty list. If I get the first argument, uh, and this is my map. Oh, I need to. Here, I don't care about the types because it should be. The pointer is not the one that's empty. It should be the argument types. Yep. 
So here I'm going to get, what was it? Uh, oh yeah, that was supposed to be a one or a zero, so. Ks of one, and for one, what I wanted to have was immediate and position. So I'm going to call that uh, immediate is just going to be a value and zero was an address. So and of that one, it's going to be parsed already. So what I want is an address. This is going to be the other instructions. I'm just going to return uh, maps. Oh, that's the mistake I made the last time around. So I'm going to return address. Yeah, this is going to still be kind of lazy evaluation. Maps get the pointer is already on the plus one. Yeah, I don't need the pointer at all. Oh yeah, I need the pointer, absolutely I do. Um, so here this was only the, the type. I actually don't need to do this. I, I need to keep the same type I had, but just fetch the direct value that were existing. So uh, I get the value. I'm flipping them around though, I think. Because I'm going through all the art. No, I'm doing them in the same order. That's correct. Uh, maps get p of map, and then I'm going to get the other arguments at p plus one tail and the map, and that's my tail recursive. Uh, not the tail recursive. That's just my body recursive function that does everything. So here I have the source, and I'm going to just see what kind of output I get with this when I call instructions of, and I'm starting at position zero, I believe. Let's see what I did here. Yeah, I'm starting at position zero. The source here, I don't have the map yet. Okay. How did I generate the map in the other day? Input to map, input to map, input to map. Yeah, I'm going to reuse that one directly. Instructions. Screw it at the end. But that one is going to be source to map. I should be a bit more. Yeah. Let's be a bit more consistent with my things. Source, source to instruction, and here is going to be. And technically, this one is no longer the source to instructions, it's now map to instructions, but screw this. Um, I have the entirely wrong model for how I do it. Yeah, I'm reading it from the map in this one. Here, I'm just reading it. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Source to map instruction. Let's just see how that runs because at this point I've written a lot of code without testing anything. Param types, extract param. Yeah, that's extract param. Oh, I never wrote that one. Okay. Param types of zero. Oh uh, no, that's a digit. When I'm at zero, 
it's an empty list. Pattern types of Oh, no, that's not how it works. Because I'm going to read them in order to make the... Pattern count. Oh, uh, and I'm starting at zero. I'm going to make a body recursive function that just goes through them. So when I'm at the final count, so n is my initial digit for the parameters. When I have the exact value, I'm done. Actually, let's call them that way. And then when I'm going to start with uh, the counter and the param count, I'm going to be a bit more explicit with this. Let's so you see in the C in the param count, and the thing I can do is going to be out of M, and the parameters is number C, and I'm never getting a value of zero because zero does not exist. That's going to work fine. And it should be parentized, and C plus one, param count, and my line is too long now. There we go. And isn't, of course it isn't. All right. Now what? Unused, unused. Oh, it's params. Naming things. Hardest problem after reading the instructions right. Now it compiles, so advent run five. I messed something up. Let's interrupt this. Come on. Even the shell interrupt was not working and now it's going to have kind of broken input. Uh, all right, so where do we get stuck? Day 05, all of them. I'm going to, I'm going to try it with a make an example function again because the big input is probably too large, and I'm going to start with a smaller one that they have given us at some point in there. Just this little dude to parse, and we'll see how we go through this. So, source is going to be the string to source of this little input and source. Let's see what we get here. Day 05. Oh, it's not loaded, an example. I'm already getting an infinite loop on that one, which is really not great. Uh, oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Um, I'm going to trace all the freaking thing. So, uh, day 05, all the freaking function. Uh, give me also the return value, and I will want, I don't know, 100 lines. Scope is local, because I want to see the private functions. Now this is going to be fun. Oh, it's not giving me the return values right now. Okay, so string to source. I'm just going to, you know, uh, input the current line number and play with that one. 
source to instructions. If I'm getting in this one, it means that source to map is not the one that goes super far. Um, instruction should not be the one infinitely looping, but just getting that should give me enough input to get ahead in these. So. Hmm. Okay, line 28. So I'm getting stuck in getting my instruction. No. All right. Let's just keep adding these little guys. Parent types. Here. This is going to be kind of a less trouble than fixing a lot of the other ones. So I'm stuck at line 54. Which means this one. Oh, but okay. Oh, oh, wait, so it's its extract param. Is it my power function? Oh yeah, I'm not starting as, oh no, that's the thing. I used a one index on these, but I can get zero arguments. Uh, plus one. Five example. No function close macking of oh, code. 33. Now that's an interesting one. How am I getting the <laughs> code 33 in that thing? Oh, God. 10.002. So I need to parse the results now. I'm getting something odd out of it. Because upcode 2 should be Okay. It works like it did before. It's value stored at address 433. Immediate mode is value. Okay, so I'm just going out of bounds on my parameters count. And I'm reading. Wait, no. Because I'm reading upcode number 33. So I'm calling upcode at a place where I should be extracting the upcode instead. Oh god. So I missed that one up. Uh so up go thirty three should be up code three. Oh. That should be the end of the program. The first term works when I did before the value stored at just 4, 33. The second parameter 3 in immediate mode simply has value 3. But. Okay. It's written according to the third parameter in function mode. Yeah, that's the thing. And that wasn't a mistake before, because I had zero padding in my things. Matching up code zero. But, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So this is an extract up code. And clearly, I'm missing tests for that one. I'm going to go in here and and this is 
going to be an And see what I get. This is already 55 minutes and I've not even finished part one because I've taken a lot of time on this. Jesus. We're getting a long video. So extracting of a thousand to oh I broke the first one. Yeah. So that's not the way it goes. I'm going to need to add a test here where is that what I wanted because that was what it was supposed to give me on the other one here. 30 degrees in a minute node is simply as a value 3. The result of the operation is 3 multiplied by multi 3. By 30. Yeah, it is an immediate mode. Second parameter. Why? Or this is the upcode. Oh, value zero two. First, first, first parameter. Did I misunderstand how that works again? For in position mode. It works like before. It's values are something. Stored at address 4, 33. The second parameter is 3, is internal value is value 3. Okay, so maybe, uh, okay, so I need to do lazy evaluation of these because it is rewriting itself as it freaking goes. God damn it. Because it will rewrite to position 0 in there. That's the fear I had, and now I need to fix this. So I cannot do the entire conversion of source to instructions in here and source to map can be done. Just run the freaking program. I don't care anymore. And here I'm going to run the program and get what I was doing here. You know, I have the program, I have the multiplication, I need to apply the instructions as I go. So instructions, that's still good. Gets the instructions with the arguments. Uh, um, and running the program is going to be apply instruction. Uh, I think I don't even need the pointer. Yes, I need the pointer. 40 instruction. Hopefully that will work now. And, oh, that's going to return me a new map and a new pointer. And then I can just... run the program with new P and... Uh, I could be halting the program here. So run the program some more. And if it's halt, I'm just going to. OK, the program is done. And apply instruction. I don't need to get to new p should in fact be plus apply uh, what was the name of the function it was instruction size okay mixed type values so applying an instruction there this is A 
This is where I run all my freaking up codes. Args. And here, what I'm going to do is actually, whatever the up code is. Uh, call upcode on and I need to have my map here I think this should work read the arguments uh, that one needs to map as well So if what I have is an empty list, I return the empty list. If what I have was the address and there's a map here. And I have a map. What I want to do is out of the map and the thing I was returning on day two was I think there's a double pointer to run on this one because I want the value that is at this value in the map that gives me this I can't do I can't do that approach because the last argument in some cases is a return value, in some cases it's just an input because you want to output stuff. Uh, okay. Back to here. I'm just going to shorten it because uh, it's readable. Read arcs. Yes. I'm going to actually just make a single one. And that's going to be the value I need. Uh, and this is the value at n so. okay so if I have my upcode for the addition god this is taking forever a b and return Then what I'm going to do is um, in the map, this is going to be my result, and I will store my result at our result. I can make it all work on a single line with at this value and it should be existing already and now we apply the same to all the freaking arguments so multiplication is just going to be exactly this bit uh, hopefully I can reuse this one more directly in the future. Now, the other one instructions that I had was uh, input only had an address because it makes no sense to take the other value. Uh, oh God. Getting the input is going to be, uh, let's get in the duck. IO read, I guess. Where's the IO module? Oh. oh God. It's not easy to search that one. IO
Yeah, I'm just going to use IO get line, which is just a prompt. And I assume that this needs to be an integer, so uh, a list integer. Hopefully it won't break, but if it does, it's because of a line break, so string trim. Um, this is going to be my new integer, and that means that what I'm going to do with this one is just stick it there. Uh, apply instruction output. This should only be an address again. I have the map. It's all coming together. Um, oh, I will format just a value. I don't give a crap anymore. Maps get r map. And I need to return the map again and apply instruction exit should have an empty value. I don't give a crap about the map and I only turn halt. I don't need now let's see if the example works. Why is this complaining? Yep, yeah. oh let's fix these. It is defined play instruction to play oh yeah I no longer need the pointer in here oh, I had tests here my tests were reverted that's good oh god all right I'll take a little break get uh bad key 33 oh that's the value in the pointer four. Okay. Sorry about that. So I wrote a thing in 33. All right. Um, I'm going to get rid of all my IO formats. You know what? I hope that considering I couldn't reuse my thing properly from the previous day, at least I will be able to reuse this one because I'm putting a lot of effort in it. So that one is a bad key on position 33. I'm getting a reading value 33, so I'm probably going out of a bound somewhere, but uh, let's see what we get. Uh, All right, now this is where tracing becomes really, really fun because I am able to see all the things I have. So I'm parsing my program example properly. I get the value here, first one, one, zero, zero, two. That's the first value I have in the map. One, four, three, and four has the value 33, and that should be hoop matching the input string we had here. Yeah, one, two, four, three, four, thirty-three. So the parsing is not fine. Source to map, run the program. I read the first instruction, and the first instruction should be the upcode number two. Is that what they were telling us? Upcode two, yes, which is a multiplication. Is this what they were telling us it was? Multiplies its first two parameters, yes. So I multiply three arguments in the three arguments. I have the parameters types. Okay, so this is calculating the parameters times. Well, okay, so an address value address. So I should be position. This is address value and address. This so far seems to be fine. So when I get the arguments for these, uh, I return four, three, four. Is this the thing again? Yeah, four. 
and this is the value it gets, 434. I apply the instructions Hmm. Okay. So I apply instruction, I read the argument for A, I read the argument for B, and I want to put this in the address I have in the first one, which is four. That should be fine. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, the result of this, the second parameter is three in the immediate mode. So that one should be working, then why am I reading the argument the address for? This is good. Let's add more of them. Maybe. Wait, why? Okay, I'm reading the first address for, which has a value 33. That should be working. Uh, sweet lord. I'm really not having the best of times right now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to catch. And I'm going to also just put the return value. Just give me something to. Don't care. Am I flipping how position and the value mode are supposed to be working? I don't think so. Oh, okay, yeah, A, B, C, position mode is, yeah, that's a pointer. B should be immediate mode. That should be the thing. All right, like this is a long video. You've got time today. I'm going to debug it and just explain to you what was the problem when I'm back. All right, I figured it out. And so it was not super tricky for that one, frankly. Uh, it's just that I was doing a double reading because I'm already reading the arguments here when I'm just fetching the value that I'm supposed to get in uh, getting all the arguments. So if I just, oops dropped it here and did my reading more directly, it avoided a problem. Um, getting the arguments is something I do before applying each instruction, so it's safe to run it that way. So running the example is now fine. Let me recompile the module 41 and 46. Ooh, I've, I've messed up my output. Okay. Uh, That was when editing stuff, I guess I messed it up. No. Uh, okay, so what was my good state there? I don't know. Oh, I removed all my IO formats. Genius. Maps get R and the map. And I had deleted this and broken it in map. Map isn't used. Indeed, it isn't. OK. Day 5 example works. I hope this. Oh, yeah. I needed to put the input, which I believe was 1. Let me input provide it 1, the ID for the thing. Oh, sweet lord. Oh, my output is just a value. All right, so I guess I have to get this, and um, it's going to be And 
that is my result. So I assume I will just drop all the prefixed zeros in there. Sweet! Ah, finally, one hour fifteen into it. Part two. Hopefully part two does not ask me to rewrite the whole freaking thing. Just add me up codes. I'm going to be happy with that. It's actually making the airship warmer. Yeah, I don't care. And so you need to use the test to extend the thermal radiators. It's distinct. Your encode computer is not upcode. Jump if true, jump if false, less than equals. Okay, just adding up code should be easy. Um, so first parameter is non zero, it sets the instruction pointer to the value from the second parameter. So it's done again. So. Pointers! All right, where's my up code? Ah, this is now pretty. Up code five. Jump. If true, and that takes how many arguments? First parameter is on zero. It sets the instruction pointer to the value from the second parameter. So two parameters on that one. Then I have six, which is what? Jump if false. All right. I assume it takes the same amount of argument. The next one is going to be less than one. Three parameters and OK. seven and eight and that one was less than or equal i'm going to use the airline format for it uh and equals is second parameter as it stores one in the position so i'm going to use just you know straight up equals like that so i'm going to split my screen and go see the oh that's a three argument here. And let's apply the instructions by implementing them. So apply instruction for if true. Uh, and I had two arguments, which is going to be the conditional and the return address. Oh no, Jesus, I just realized the instruction pointer to the value from the second parameter, otherwise it does nothing. So I'm going to have to rework this little bit here to uh, fake the current pointer value. New map, new p, and new p. All right. So now I am returning this uh, p plus four. Uh, that's just going to be p. I was close to it. Uh, it's going to be p plus four as well on this one if I ever manage to type the freaking thing. Apply instruction for input. So that one is just going to be P plus two. Kind of dislike that one. It would have been more elegant the other way around, but it broke. That one is also P plus two. Jump if true. Uh, ignore B on this one. And so they wanted me to do what? If the first parameter is non zero. So, and otherwise, what does it do? Otherwise, it does nothing. So it returns. It has to return. It, it cannot do nothing because it's going to be an infinite loop because I'm going to reread the first instruction over and over again. So it has to be um, uh, and it said if it's non-zero it says the instruction but it do the second parameter. Otherwise it does nothing. So if it's zero we do nothing. So I'm assuming I'm just going to return map and uh, 
I'm going to need this pointer here because otherwise I will remain in the same position. Uh, otherwise, I return the same map, but I read art from R and that's the return value. And uh, jump if false is going to be, I assume, the opposite. But instead of assuming, I'm going to go read and double check. If the first parameter is zero, then it sets. Yep. Ah! I edited the wrong one. Jump in true, jump if false. If it's zero, I set it to the other one, and then the last instruction was less than. If it's zero, it sets to the last instruction. Less than. If the first parameter is less than the second parameter, it stores one in the position given by the third parameter. Apply instruction. So here I'm going to have A, B, and return. And that's always one, if that's what I did earlier, yes. Map B, and so. What was it? Yeah. Is less than the second parameter as it stores one, otherwise it stores zero. Otherwise, and this is a true in Erlang, it stores zero, and that's my if expression. And so I will store map in R the value of the result and P plus four. And the other one is equal equal, so I assume it's going mostly the same, but here it's going to run this way. And I'm going to double check before I save equal to, otherwise it stores zero. And why am I getting an issue here? Oh, there we go. Here, what's the problem? Undefined. So I've got other. Head map, and I don't care about the pointer because it's the whole thing instruction. Illegal guard express. Oh, yeah. Screw this. One, false, zero. There we go. We need to do the same thing here. Case of true one. Oop. False, zero. There we go, so. Sweet Lord, at least the second part, if that one works, would have been much shorter because I spent all my sweet time making a very nice state machine going around that way. Now what? It always matches. Oh yeah, I forgot to replace the instruction. And was that the actual instruction in my opcode? Just to make sure, yeah. Oh, I used the Erlang strict equal in there. Instruction size is no longer needed because you're a useless fool. Oh, it works now. All right. And the second, okay, so in my output program, I'm going to 
change a little thing and give it a line break. Actually, I'm fine with keeping it as is. I'm just going to line break on this one. Don't care. I just want the final output of the program to be split from the rest. On the oh yeah, no, I haven't run the second one. Same input. So what's changing on this one? Okay, like all instructions parameters are described above. Instruction is increased. That value is not automatically increased. I think that's what I was already doing. Then I'll put zero. The input was zero. The input was one. So I'm going to use these in the examples and make sure that my thing is fine. Uh, day 05 example. Hey, I'm supposed to take an input in there. What did I do? It used to work. Oh, God damn it. I'm guessing I'm doing a conditional jump over one of these that it needs. So maybe my Okay, let's see this again. Yeah. Instruction pointer increases by the number of values in the instructions. Instruction modifies the instruction pointer that values used. And it is not automatically increased. So that's good. But only if the instruction. Okay, so that was right. It takes one input, compare it to the value 8, and then produce 1. Oh, I probably had not even recompiled that one. That one compares if it's equal to eight. I'll put zero. That okay. I probably just forgot to recompile. Let's see now. Uh, that would be great if that's the reason. Yeah, that one compares to. Ah. Uh, okay. Let's go with these again first. I'll put one. I'm going to just run them in order because I'm skipping around too much. Equal to eight. Or, or the other one was less than eight. Okay. Nope, that's the. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. Equal to eight, one otherwise. If it's equal to eight, if it's equal, if it's not equal to eight, that's zero. That works. Here are some jump tests. Okay, so those were my tests for equality. Oh, the jump can both use position or immediate mode. Is that so? But I don't know if it's jump on the input or the output. Yeah. OK, so let's go again with our little friend jump if true. If the first parameter is non-zero, it sets the instruction pointer to the value from the second parameter. If it's non-zero, sets the option parameter from the read value second argument. Otherwise, it does nothing. Jump if false. If the first parameter is zero, it sets the instruction pointer to the value from the second parameter. Value from the second parameter. All right. 
so that should be all right so we're going to test this body again I have something that's extremely going out of bounds. All right, take a break. We'll come back when I find out what it is. Okay, I was reading myself, and I think I figured it out. Uh, those are supposed to be increments by three, not by two, because there are two arguments, but I need to count the instructions, and that's what I did with output and all the other ones. And that should be plenty enough. So, uh, let's recompile and rerun the example. If that one is one, it works. If that one is zero, it suddenly works. All right. So, advent run five. And then that's the second one. If I give it the input of zero, that's the same input. All right, I get the same OK there. Since I use the same state machine, though, I broke my first result for that program, but I no longer give a shit, like, frankly. It's uh, the above single problem is input instruction to asking symbol number of a problem. I'll put 999. OK, I'm going to try this one properly because it's a serious test. Well, then I'll put 999 if the input is below 8, I'll put 1000 if it's equal to 8, or 1001 if it's equal to 8. So it's all related to 8. So I'm going to take this to the example. Here we go. Ew. Get rid of the garbage. No, oh, it's day oh, five. I'm tired. So if I make something like seven, it's nine nine nine. If I make something like eight, it's a thousand. If I make it nine, it's a thousand one. Finally. All right. What's the diagnostic code for system ID five? You know what? The thing I really admire about this thing is that whoever wrote this um, for the advent of code it's really impressive how they can use the same input for multiple parts and it always works because part one is using the code one and part two was using the code five for me and those give you different results depending on where you go for them. So hopefully now this works because if that doesn't work but all the examples did, I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh God, it's not the right answer. No. Oh, in hell. I passed all the other tests. Oh, God. Five. P2. I just need to. And I run the program IV5. That's the same input. What the? And it's the same program with the same input. Am I supposed to have a new input? I can still get my program. I'm going to reread the instructions because I'm passing all the freaking tests, but it still doesn't work. All right, I think I found out for people following at home, opcode seven is less than, and I have done less than or equal. Jesus, do I hate this. All right. Oh. Now let's see how this little dude goes. And let's try this one. At least it's a different result this time around. Oops. Yeah. 
Yay! Made it work. God damn it. All right. That solves it for day five after an hour 35 of your time. Um... See you. Actually, yeah, day six and day seven are going to be delayed because I will not have the time to do them and they will come after a few days' breaks. All right, on all of this, uh, thank you for your time and Jesus. I hope I don't have to mess with something this long again. Have a good day.